welcome to Under SF. I'm Erica Cattere. And I'm Cameron Davis. Today's episode will cover one of San Francisco's most lively neighborhoods, the Castro. There's so many incredible things to know about the Castro, so let's start off with a little bit of background about the area. The Castro District, formerly known as Eureka Valley, is one of San Francisco's most prominent neighborhoods with a thriving nightlife atmosphere. From its parades, bars, fine dining, and vibrant scenery, the Castro is definitely a great spot for a night out in San Francisco. Attractions such as the Castro Theater, the Rainbow Walk of Fame, Harvey Milk's old camera store, and the 16th Street Mural are great places to start. I mean, even the rainbow crosswalks on the streets are pretty amazing. Not to mention, the Castro has been known more specifically for its progress in LGBT activism ever since the 1960s and remains a center for advocacy and resources today. The gay rights movement of the 1960s and 70s propelled the Castro into historic recognition. However, the LGBT community faced incredibly harsh discrimination back in those days. People weren't always so supportive of gay rights, but the Castro community did a lot to fight for social justice and gained a reputation for its accepting and understanding culture. Over time, the addition of LGBT support in the 60s and 70s provided the neighborhood with a new social relevance that's still recognized today. One of the most notable gay rights advocacy and resource establishments, the LGBT Community Center works to provide opportunities and resources for the LGBT community and all who support the gay rights movement. Located in the Castro at the corner of Market Street and Octavia Boulevard, the center provides a variety of incredible programs for the LGBT community. That's right. Some of those programs that they offer include economic development, health and wellness, community and policy initiatives, arts and culture, as well as children, youth, and family programs. With such a huge network for community outreach, the center has had an unbelievably positive influence on individuals seeking assistance. Not only do they help people better their own lives, they provide the Castro District and the entire LGBT community with a greater sense of pride. The work they do is a truly inspiring addition to the gay rights movement as a whole. We spoke with Ruth McFarlane, the Director of Programs at the LGBT Community Center, to get more information on the amazing work they're doing. Let's take a look. My name is Ruth, I'm the Director of Programs here at the San Francisco LGBT Community Center. So a lot of the community centers, LGBT community centers around the country really got started in like the early, mid, late 70s and in San Francisco that didn't happen and so a group of um, community members got together in the late 90s and decided, hey, San Francisco of all places should really have an LGBT community center. and. The capital for the building that we're in right now was actually raised by the community. Um, and the building was built in 2002. Um, and we opened our doors in 2002, and we've been here ever since. So we're about, what, 13 years old now. The mission of the San Francisco um, LGBT Community Center is to really connect people in the community to opportunities, resources, and each other. Um, and we do that in a lot of different ways. So our programs span everything from arts and, arts and culture program to civic engagement, to a very large volunteer program. We have about 600 volunteers in our kind of volunteer pool, um, and hundreds of them are active each year. We do huge events around Pride. Um, this year we also uh, took over hosting the Pink Party, Pink Saturday um, party in the Castro. So we do some really big events that, that kind of draw out the community and give us an opportunity to celebrate what we're all about. We do um, the Trans Day of Remembrance and Trans Day of Visibility as well. Um, but then we also have direct service programs because one of the things we're really committed to here at the center is really making sure that we're thinking about and reaching those folks who are most marginalized within our community. So we have an array of programs. We have a large um, economic development department and it's actually, it was the first LGBT focused economic development project in the country. And in that department, we offer uh, an array of services, um, employment services, some employment services that are specifically focused on transgender individuals. San Francisco has an extremely low unemployment rate, about 3.2%, and yet trans folks in, in San Francisco are actually experiencing unemployment around 90%. So we do specifically focus on the needs of trans individuals. 
Um, in that department, we also offer access to the city's below market rate housing program. We do the workshops that are um, associated with that so that folks can get a certificate and get into the lotteries for below market rate housing. We also have a below market rate rental program. We have a program for entrepreneurs and small businesses. And all of our services are free. So that's really exciting. And then in addition to that, um, we have a program for young people. So we have a youth program. And our youth program is special because it really targets homeless youth here in San Francisco, 18 to 24 year olds. And what we know about that population is that about 40% of the kids who are out on the street or are marginally housed in San Francisco are identifying as LGBT. So again, huge disparity in terms of kind of where people are landing and what's happening. And we think that some of the reasons we're seeing some of these disparities amongst trans folks and amongst homeless youth is because San Francisco is the amazing city it is. And it has you know, this phenomenal reputation and legacy of being a place where specifically queer people can come and really pursue their dream of a safe and happy and secure life. In reality, this is a really tough city to live in, and folks get here, and especially young folks, and you know, don't necessarily have access to all the resources they need. So we really try to kind of catch those folks when they land here and welcome them, and then begin to help them to get connected to what they need. When it's time to choose healthcare for your child, you want the best. When it's time for your child's physical exam, you want a professional you can trust. At Valencia Health Services, your time is well spent. We provide professional quality healthcare. Valencia Health Services, dedicating quality time to every child, every visit. Committed to professional healthcare because your child's health is our first priority. Valencia Health Services, quality time because we care. sale at bookstores and newsstands near you. Experience Theater Bay Area Magazine. Welcome back to Under SF, the Castro District episode. We've got some more incredible highlights of the Castro for you today, including one of the neighborhood's most well-known salons, Daddy's Barbershop, a small business with a big following. Daddy's Barbershop is focused on their great service and their eco-friendly hair products located at the corner of 19th Street and Castro. Daddy's Barbershop has a reputation to make you look great and feel great. The shop's tagline, not your father's barbershop, makes for an experience that's not your average haircut. We have something truly special for you all today. We sent one of our producers, Derek Bavin, into Daddy's Barbershop for a makeover. Derek is known here at Under SF for his production work. He's got a big heart, big hair, and a big beard. I like to call him the shaggy dog. Let's see what Daddy's Barbershop can do to transform his look. Uh, my name is Arlen Lasseter. I am the founder and owner of Daddy's Barbershop in San Francisco. Um, I started this company, it will be six years ago, or six years on uh, March 2nd we've been running and we are um, a huge part of this community um, most of we, we started out catering to the leather community of San Francisco who's part of the Castro also um, recently we have uh, expanded into the the straight community who is moving into the Castro so we cater to both but we um, we do a lot of things for this community we are actually launching a uh, a homeless project where we're collecting um, uh, socks and underwear for the homeless for the month of December for a little Christmas thing. And um, I was put into a film called Folsom Forever. I also sit on the board of directors for Folsom events, Folsom Street events. So the film is basically about Folsom, but they came and interviewed me at Daddy's for the economic input of businesses that the fair has. Um, 
uh, and um, it's huge when that fair comes to town, the, the amount of money that, that flows through the city and even to small businesses like Daddy's Barbershop. So it's all a really, really good thing that we do for the community here and um, uh, I think that uh, we are loved worldwide. People recognize us, they come. We have tourists that come here. They take pictures of the Daddy sign. Um, sometimes they take pictures of us cutting hair. Uh, it's very cool. Wow, he looks great. What a transformation. The staff at the shop sure know what they're doing. Thank you so much to everyone at Daddy's Barber Shop. If you're interested in getting your own makeover, Daddy's Barber Shop is open seven days a week and walk-ins are definitely welcome. Coming up next, we'll be introducing three outstanding places to check out in the Castro. The Castro Theater, Hot Cookie Bakery, and the Pink Triangle Park. The Castro Theater is one of San Francisco's premier movie houses. Hot Cookie Bakery is a world famous destination serving up some interesting shaped cookies and the Pink Triangle Park serves as a monument and reminder of the struggles and hardships endured for gay rights. This next segment, you're not going to want to miss this. We shop at the American Cancer Society Discovery Shops for designer clothes, household items, and quality collectibles. I volunteer at the American Cancer Society Discovery Shops to benefit a cure for cancer. We donate to Discovery Shops where profits go towards cancer research, education, and patient services. Discover your shop. Discover a cure. Discovery, Discovery Shops. When I enroll in school, I want to learn how to run a business. When I enroll in school, I want to learn how to build houses. When I enroll in school, I want to learn how to put out fires. When I enroll in school, I'm going to learn how to save life. You have the tools, you have the power. You can help your child by completing the enrollment application on time today. Hello, I'm Richard Hildreth. I'm operations manager here at the Castro Theater. The 
Lancaster Theater as you know it today was built in 1922. The same family that built it in 1922, the Nassers, still own the theater. It was, uh, when it first opened, of course, a major source of entertainment for the folks in the Eureka Valley neighborhood. We call this San Francisco's Movie Palace because it is the last real surviving example of that. However, in 1922, it was considered a neighborhood movie theater. In that era, a true movie palace would have seated 3,500 people and above. So this is where people went for essentially second run movies. Movie festivals like the San Francisco International Film Festival, which is the oldest film festival in the United States. Noir City, which happens here in January, a collection of uh, classic film noir, all double features. I mean, we do a lot of film festivals and a curious thing about the film festival, I referenced Noir City earlier. Noir City is in here for 10 days and it will sell this place out at least three or four times during those 10 days. People come from all over. They take their vacation and come watch noir films. We've had everyone from uh, Marissa Meyer, the head of Yahoo, to Kim Kardashian on this stage. And so it's had to adapt over the years to, to keep thriving, but it is continuing to thrive. In the 1970s, when Eureka Valley became known as the Castro District, largely after the influx of uh, gays from all around the country finding this a more hospitable place to be, the name the Castro District came from our marquee uh, because the fabulousness of this place, the fabulousness of movies in general, was really embraced by the uh, new gay community. And instead of calling it Eureka Valley, they started calling it the Castro. And that name has stuck, and today it is still known, and will be for a long time, I suspect, as the Castro District. It is, it is the colorful central core that helped redefine the Castro in the 1970s and continues to be the most focal point uh, in the neighborhood. You see postcards from this neighborhood, you see the Castro Marquee. <laughs> That's what represents the neighborhood to most people outside of it and to most people within it. We are very, I don't want to say gay, but like we're kind of really gay. Like if you look at our wall, we have like people in our underwear, we have penis cookies, we have penis cookies. Like I don't think it gets any more Castro than hot cookie. We're like, we have a cookie called the Fudge Packer. Like who does that? We do. <laughs> Friday and Saturday, we're open till one o'clock in the morning. We're here until 1.30 closing. Sometimes we be here later and even at like two o'clock in the morning, people are like still knocking on the door, still trying to get cookies. They're like, please, like, I'll do whatever. Like, I'll pay you $20 for one cookie. And we're just like, sorry, <laughs> we're closed. But like, a lot, like we're very well known. Like before I started working here, I would like go to clubs and like, I'd be at a club and I'd be like, I'll be right back. And I would like come here, buy cookies and like sneak cookies into the club. Like that's how good these cookies are. Like. and I've been living in La Castro now for 15 years. I've been in San Francisco since I was 15 years old and um, I love it here. I recently moved just above the Pink Triangle Park and every morning I wake up and I work from home and I look down in this park and I've kind of taken a feeling of belonging and pride here. I volunteer and work on the landscaping my motivation for this has been, um, it was a long time until I understood a lot about what happened to gay history. Because I was born pretty lucky. I was born after the previous generation had done most of the work of securing gay rights. By the time that I was coming out, things were relatively, for me, much, much easier. 
there was no major persecution. We had most of the civil rights. We couldn't marry, but I was never feeling in danger of getting beaten up or evicted from my home or losing my job. And that's because of all the work from the previous generation. And that's kind of what this park symbolizes, because this park symbolizes the generation that had it even worse. When people think of the Holocaust, they think quite correctly about the large number of Jewish people that were murdered during the Holocaust. But in addition to the, the Jewish people that were murdered, there were also Slavs and gays. And this was the origins of the pink triangle. So everybody who was gay was forced to wear a pink triangle just as Jews were forced to wear the Star of David. And they were actually singled out for even more persecution because in the Nazi mind, being gay was the worst you could possibly be. So they were beaten, they were experimented upon, and that's what this park is a remembrance of. The name Harvey Milk is often synonymous with the Castro District itself. Milk was a gay activist, politician, and icon of the gay rights movement. He gained national attention when he was elected to the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in 1977 and became the first openly gay elected official in California. While serving as supervisor, Milk sponsored a bill that helped outlaw discrimination based on sexual orientation. Harvey Milk was tragically killed in 1978. In August 2009, President Obama posthumously awarded Milk the Presidential Medal of Freedom for his contribution to the gay rights movement, stating, he fought discrimination with visionary courage and conviction. Now in the studio, Loco Tranquilo will perform a very special song written in tribute to the late Harvey Milk. Your life set me free. 
to Loco Tranquilo for writing a song especially for our show. That was such a great performance. We also want to thank the Castro Theater, the San Francisco LGBT Community Center, the Harvey Milk Museum, and Daddy's Barbershop for all their help with this episode. This concludes our season of the show. Thank you so much for watching and please join us next year for another season of Under SF. I'm Erica Cattery. And I'm Cameron Davis. See you next time.